you have so far. <laughs> <laughs> I've misjudged seriously. The meeting to order. Yes, ma'am. Uh, first item on the agenda is to approve the agenda, and we should add the minutes from the December fourth, twenty thirteen meeting to the agenda. Is that motion? Or December fourth. All second. So 
That's why there's still 5,000. None of that has been spent this year. And that's why it's um, in the budget again for the next year. If it doesn't work, it won't be spent. Right. And we won't need it next year right. because I've of the difficulties that we've experienced with. Right. Not with that, not with that particular company. And that was the most reasonably priced company. It just doesn't make sense to pay the money for something that's not going to meet the needs. time we get the town meeting or get an approval, um, then that line will be reduced by the amount that we won't need anymore. It's unfortunate. In theory, it's a great system until we started working with them and realized that all the, that there was going to be just as much work in on the back side of that computer program as it was going to be doing paperwork. When do you anticipate finding out, like, finalizing and buttoning up that? whole piece of the software because the fiscal year is not closed yet. Right. Um, I guess it depends on how long it takes for the DNI to connect and for me to be able to work through it. The problem lies if you have a program like say it's basketball and the basketball deadline is Thursday, March 6th. It's the only deadline is one program. The software works for something like that. But the before and after school program, the deadline is Thursday and Somebody can sign up for any day of the week for mornings, any day of the week for afternoons, any combination of those. And so they call those advanced programs. And with the advanced programs, they don't, they, and, and they'll run each week. Um, they go week to week. And so those are the programs that they can't do deadlines for. I, I certainly understand the dilemma. So I need to see if they've really worked that out. I need, he tells me that they have, but the messages that I'm getting from him, the answer is not a clear yes, it's going to work out, it's going to work exactly the way you need it to. It's, I need to talk you through it, I'd like to spend a little time on it with you, you know, I think we're going to be able to make this work for you, so I, I'm not, I'm not sold that it's going to be perfect. So I don't know the answer, it depends on how long, you know, and if I have to tell him, no, that still doesn't meet our needs, and he has to go back to his software program and fix it again. I don't know how long that will take. It took him, what, a month or two to fix it the first time? So they take it they don't get paid until the thing is up right. and running and working. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. And the other issue was payment. If people want to, a lot of people pay cash. Mm -hmm. They want to pay cash. There's no way to reserve in the system. A spot that might be taken. Some some programs are limited to how many kids can be taken. And if somebody wanted to pay cash, there was no way to for them to register, secure that spot, and say that they've paid cash. So that's another thing that he's trying to figure out. So it was only credit card. Yeah, exactly. Right, and then, and then, then there's enough fees. Right, there was a lot of complicating factors, and it sounded simple at first. It did, and if it's not going to be more simple if it's going to be the same amount of time for me on the back side to get through all the fees and figure out who still owes cash and chase that. Okay, I'll just keep doing Yeah, it. And, and where I'm at really is, you know, if I, if I can re not put $5,000 into a budget that doesn't need to be in the budget, I really don't think that we should do that. And I think, you know, also, I mean, there's some unanswered questions and you're really stuck in a dilemma. And, I, you know, I think. We probably should table this piece of it until we find out those those answers, so that we can move forward and present a budget that we feel really feel good about. And you know, it, it's because um, <laughs> I, I really don't want to put you know that in there when it doesn't need to be. Mm -hmm. and well, you think so that's, at town meeting, this could always be reduced, correct? It can. Mm -hmm. Yes, it can. Can't go up. You can go down and come in. Yeah, but I mean that's also saying that. Look, I would prefer not to do that. 
I think it makes more sense to do that than not to do it because if uh, if all problems get worked out and we want to go ahead with it, we'll put mm -hmm. ourselves in a position where she's got to wait another year to get the to get the money approved. Well, that's another thing. That's another thing. But I think maybe giving her another week to figure out I doubt it will be in a week. I'm moving Monday for Florida, so I would say when will be the next time that we meet? Uh, the what's today? Fifth, twelfth, nineteenth. The nineteenth, I assume. Yeah, does that sound fair? Well, I mean, I can certainly I touch base with him, yeah, but yeah. that means that he needs if he has to go back to his software programmers, that takes time. Mm -hmm. So I can't tell you that I'll have a definite answer by by March nineteenth. I definitely will connect with him by by then. And be able to look at what he has, but if it still doesn't work, and I have to send him back for mm -hmm. more work on his software, right? And you could certainly give him a heads up, and you get two working days of this week before you go, right? Oh, I will yeah. certainly give him a heads up. But that, is, you know, the, the programming piece is something that takes him some time to work on. It. And he doesn't, you know, he last time I said that's just not going to work. If it isn't going to meet our needs completely, then I'm not going to spend the time money on it. And so it took him a month or two. To get with his programmers and get that worked out, and at this point, I still don't know if that's going to meet our needs. Mm -hmm. so if it doesn't, and he has to go back again, that could take more time. So I would say that by the time, you know, certainly before you have to finalize the budget, I would hope that we'd be able to have the final answer by then. Yeah. Is everybody okay with tabling that until later? What are you suggesting exactly, Molly? Because it's pretty obvious um, from what she's saying that this probably isn't going to be resolved for, sounds like, what, a couple of months? Could be. So I think, I think there ought to be a decision tonight one way or the other. Either we trust Todd and her to, you know, reduce the budget when it goes to town meeting, because I think it, uh, it sounds like the way it's going if we refuse to put the 5000 bucks in now, she's dead in the water this year. We still have opportunity to finalize this budget and make any other changes that we have. And she's willing to cooperate, you know, to, to go along with that and waiting. When do you need the budget finalized by Todd to get it to town meeting? So uh, probably mid-April. Mid-April, yeah. Do you think you'll have the situation resolved so. by mid-April? So. And as you said, John, last year we did the same thing with, there were some items last year that if something had been approved, we would not need another line item. I thought it was something for public works. But we've done that before. We, you know, I'll, I'll yeah. open up the article and say, you know, taking into consideration what we've run into, we need to reduce this by $5,000. I mean, if that's the worst case scenario, we can do that as well. Yeah. I don't remember what it was last year. It was something. I could certainly put some pressure on them and say, you know, in order for this to get into my budget this year, we need to have it all taken care of by a specific date and see see how that goes. And if they just can't do it by that date, then I can come back to you and tell you that, you know. Or you could let Todd come, you know, so you don't have to come out at night as well. issues on Jen's budget so that we can keep yeah. stop her from having to come back for anything else. Uh, but that will definitely make a note of that item and I will uh, update you as we get more information. Okay. Need a motion to table it? Um, well, I guess we probably should, as Todd just suggested, is to go over the rest of it and get any other questions pertaining to the recreation budget.
items to the rec department for activities? Or? Nothing specific that should be added to the budget at this, at this time. Um, you know, usually I try a program with my, the article that allows me to run a program that's not the budget as long as the expenses <coughs> are covered by the, by the fees collected. And then if that program is something that's going to be long term, then we add it to the budget in the next year and there isn't anything at this point that should be added in. City of Bangor is having some good luck with their dodgeball program. If I could get people to sign up by the deadline, I would be rocking too. There's a lot of fun out here that people miss the deadline. Did you sign up for a dog by one? All right, deal. <laughs> if we miss the deadline, I can see it back. So. What are you signing up for? Dodgeball. I'll stay out of that. Dodgeball. 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 I think there was no. Oh well, not much. It was not much. It's not you gave it to me. No, it's no. not. Wasn't there eighty nine? I don't know. I don't know. I'm not even guess. Yeah, that was my bad. No, I, mean, I printed it out for you and I didn't email it to you. So. You know. There was. I think it's eighty something, but I'm not positive. Terry might looks like he knows. Wow. No, how much is in that? Rec bus reserve. <laughs> No, you know I, I apologize. No, I, mean, I meant to send that to you, and I completely forgot about it. Even after you're done fixing it. Correct. No, before. Bus and reserves. A red pen? Nope. Come here. You'll have that first thing in Highlight. the morning. No, I, I can. I'll right at the top with arrows and underlines. I will send that to all of you in a moment. I apologize for that. I said no worries. That last week. Must have been the smoke in the room. <laughs> that was awful. Can you send it to me too? Please? Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, absolutely. Anybody else have any questions for anyone yet? Nope. I'd be comfortable letting approving it as is and let Todd reduce it at the town meeting if it needs to be reduced. I don't. I think it's a bit of a waste of time table you can drag this young lady back in one more time. Do you want? Uh, we can take Todd's word for it. Yeah, we won't. We won't drag her back in here and kick in the screen. And then just so you rec bus reserve, you're all set with that. And revenues, just so everybody's aware, revenues are projected the same as this year at 131,500. Yeah. And the yes, in the interest of full disclosure. 131,825. 
Take the bad one off. Those are nothing <laughs> compared to the crap that I have to drive every day all the way up to Western New York. Oh, thanks, Jeff. Route 5, our friend is 202, is awful. I'm going to go into this conversation. I was went to Lake Conway this weekend, and Route 302 from Conway to Fryberg, they must have done a skinny mix overlay, and both travel areas where your tires are running on and gone completely. Asphalt stuck in the middle, everything else is gone. It's horrible. Horrible. That's enough. Okay. Okay. The roads are falling apart. So, um, <coughs> this is only, the only increases are the salaries and the... Salary, services, and I thought there was one more. Health insurance? Health insurance, yes. Uh, operating supplies. The same. Seventy-three to seventy-five on my own. Seventy-five is what I propose in it. Yeah. Did you you have a presentation, Roger? This is close to last year's. The main reason for the change is obviously one is a three percent proposed increase. We don't know what it's gonna be short. Electricity, C and P's talking about a rate increase. As much as ten percent. We don't know. They don't seem to. So, where we are in the current budget, we're not in bad shape with that same line, so. The other increase was in the service line. We were at 19. One of the things that we run into is a problem that's biting into that budget a lot is road striping. And striping, you notice we've got a lot of single lines in town. And we're going to slowly phase into the double line striping, which is the standard. You're not required to do any, but if you do it, you are supposed to do it according to the federal standard, which is double semi. I don't know why this makes such a difference, but what we're up against is three and a half cents per foot for every strike that you have on the road, whether it's edge striping or whatever, it's three and a half cents a foot. If it's double that, it's seven cents a foot. We're going to phase into it, but that's one of the reasons for the increase. Some of the things in order to try to stay in line, some of the back roads that are dead end roads, we don't do any developments now, but dead end roads, South Skillings, North Skillings, a few others, Walker's Lane, probably not going to be any more road, road strikes on them. No more center line strike. Just, just place it be what they are. Mm -hmm. They just keep going up and up and up. But with the Joe Bornsteins in the world, <laughs> this is what you're up against. If there's an accident on a road and it's not to the standard, even though it's not required at all, there's no law that says you have to strike. But if you do, you've got to do the standard. And we're just trying to limit our exposure. As we pave these roads, the new sections, we'll see double line striking on. It's kind of foolish as far as I'm concerned. I don't see the big deal if there's one single line or two, but that's the same. My experience on campground road really doesn't matter because people <laughs> have Yahoo's passing you, even when you try to turn left. I've had that happen to me. So that will be an issue that I have for one of the other departments. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I'll talk to him in the morning. <laughs> sure. I see that we're showing a decrease in workman's comp. Is that have we got all of our insurance quotes? Yes. Because there's several lines that are less than, yeah, we, than the we current budget. Went through with um, Cole Harrison on the insurances that they have workman's comp. That's what we've, that's the numbers we've been experiencing. That's why that one's gone down. Uh, let's see what else has decreased. Property insurance, that's historically we've been experiencing less than the 3,900. Uh, automobile insurance as well, workers' comp, um, that's our experience rating. Hopefully that will stay that way. Health insurance went down uh, because of 
there was an overestimate last year. So this is the actual number that we should experience. And other than that, they've all stayed the same. But yeah, the ones that went down, we went through with Jeff Cole and went over all of the policies that we had to try last year, the Board of Selectmen tried to get me to get a better pulse of what's going to happen. And so as we've been, I, I think I do it differently than it was done in the past, trying to reflect exactly what was spent. And so that's what we're seeing through Cole Harrison is, is those de decreases. So let's hope he hasn't told me I can cut too much, but that's where he said we'd be at. Yeah, everything else is pretty much the same, so. Okay, do you have any questions for Roger? No. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to point out, I think Roger's doing a hell of a job. The, the roads and the rubble that I thumb on all the time are in much better condition than other surrounding towns and even not so surrounding, so. One of the things we have a problem with is a lot of these towns have gone to, to straight salt, salt priority. And that stuff makes everybody else that's not using salt look bad. It takes a lot longer with sand. But when we were plowing snow, one storm in January, it's two below zero throughout the storm. All these guys that were on salt priority were really shocked when they were in trouble. It doesn't work. Yep. It needs to be 15 degrees of, or warmer for salt to have enough moisture to work. So. But you're going to see more and more of it. It's just when he wants to travel on a road that's covered. And that stuff is it's not really a miracle worker, but it just seems like it. Well, I do have to say, I do travel up and down Mountain Road a lot. And um, there was quite a few times that our road conditions were in a lot better shape than when you cross over into the river. You usually know where that line is, no matter which time you're leaving the running from. <laughs> I was just in Lyman Town, town Hall the other day complaining to Morris about our roads because apparently they've forgotten that the subdivisions exist in Lyman. Last two storms, there were eight inches of snow on my road before they even came to and plowed. So they, I expressed my discontent and told them how good the roads are run over early. He said, maybe a rental can plow our roads for us. And I said, I don't think you get enough money for that. <laughs> <laughs> One of the issues that some of these towns do, well, they don't do that. They do the main roads and they go to the developments yeah. as they can. We do them every time we go around. So trying to cut back from there would be a tough thing to do. But what do you got for uh, job schedule for this year? I was hoping you guys that. <laughs> Someone had to, so I figured I'd do it. We did some work on the Downing Road as far as the culvert. The state classifies that as a bridge. Anything over a 10-foot span, they consider a bridge, whether it's a pipe or not. And that, every year we get a bridge report, and every year they tell us that it's in bad condition. There has been no shift in the road base yet, so the culvert's not squashing or anything, but it does need some work. So there's a couple of options that you have. One of them was to do a little bit of work this year as far as getting the permits and engineering fees and stuff out of the way. Because it is a fish run. But that COVID, if you put a box collar in there, you're looking at probably 250000 bucks by the time it's all said and done. We're looking at a couple of other options to rehab that existing pipe. And I believe it's accepted now by the DEP has to be done at the correct time of year, but they go in basically, clean out the pipe, scour it, whatever you want to call it, and they have a plastic coating that you can put on. It actually has structural, adds structural strength to the pipe. So that's one of the options we're looking at. That's why I wanted to get a little bit of work done on it this year. That's one option. Another one is to line it like we've done a lot of other pipes with a liner. And that, that's on the inside of the pipe? That's on the inside of the pipe. This other process is relatively new in this area. And it looks like it would be one of the cheapest options there is. So hopefully, originally I scheduled that for this year and 
held off on it and cut back just on uh, doing permits, fees, and all that's an engineering work on it. Section of the river road from the railroad the tracks to the Rails Bridge. About the Downing Road, the culvert, the um, anticipation of snow melt and spring coming, is that going to have any effect on the Downing Road culvert? It's washed out. This, this one has not washed out. The one at the river has, further down, right at the town line. That one washed out three times in six weeks once yes. between Mother's Day, Patriots, and just a couple of fluke stones that flew through. This particular one, there's, there's no real FEMA money available because it doesn't have a history of any washouts. We've tried to, to come up with a few, you know, out of the box ideas about doing something with that, but there is no history of any damages, so you can't go to, to FEMA looking for money for that particular one. So that one's on our back, I'm afraid. But no, I don't understand. Part of the problem with this pipe is downstream is the main turnpike, and there's a one foot deflection in that box culvert. So we could put in as big a pipe as we wanted to here, and it's not going to cure the problem of the water backing up. And the turnpike has no plans on doing anything with a concrete box so they, that, that crosses their six lanes of the turnpike. Is their concrete box causing, causing some of the problems there? There's all kinds of engineering studies on it, too, some of which are. You can look at and make heads and tails out of it. But well, don't you think that the state of Maine, because they're ca uh, causing some of our issues in our town, that they should... But again, there's no history of damage because of it. It floods back, and the poor guy that lives there, Manny Sousa, he's had some problems and been flooded out and such, but go ahead and try to go after the main turnpike. What, now, what do you mean by deflection in there? Just that. The, the inlet side of that box culvert is dropped a foot. The whole box, not just the deck of it, the but the whole thing. box is tipped. So it's one foot lower than it should be, which causes the backflow. I mean, we could, like, we could put anything we wanted in, three sizes bigger on the pipe we have. It's not going to cure all the problems there. But when that one goes, it's can, can coming Can we out. send something to Representative Perry regarding this issue? Because isn't he on the Transportation Committee? He is, but not on the DO, that's not a DOT, that's a main turnpike authority. I talked to Conrad, I, we have contacts at main turnpike. And they know about it, we talked to him before. Well, I think, enough and can we mention also something to Wayne as well? Yep. Maybe CC him in it? Because that's that. not okay. I don't think for that to be happening. We can try to complain and complain, and eventually sometimes they get sick of hearing you complain and decide to fix it. So we were successful in Hollowell one time because they had storm drains on overpasses that were dumping on the shoulders of our roads and washing the roads away. So I'll see what I can uh, what I can do. Get him, get him make some contacts. I'll let, definitely let Wayne know he's been stopping in my office a lot lately, and uh, I'll get him contact as well. This is no surprise to them. They're aware of it. Yeah. And, and the studies that we have were done by their engineering firm, HNTD. So, they don't. Maybe a little political pressure might help out. You know, so. say to fix that right there, it would require putting a new culvert all the way underneath the tent, underneath the turnpike. The oh. turnpike, that's a box culvert. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, that's three lanes wide. Right 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 that <laughs> that's that's a big, big yeah. box. Yeah. Well, you know, and I also think too, if we can resolve the issue here in Arundel with their help to resolve the issue, it was for, <coughs> for us to say something instead of... So now is that one impacting the bridge or the Downing Road culvert? That impacts the, the, the upstream. The, the upstream. That just, yeah. just can't shed the amount of water it was designed to because of the deflection of the pipe. Yeah. Well, the box. The so concrete box pipe. So. Sorry, yeah. They are more than aware of it. Uh, River Road, we call it River Road Section 2, is from the railroad crossing to the Rose Bridge. A section of Thompson Road. This is a, a different process we haven't tried yet, but I've seen other towns do it. It's pretty common. They actually reclaim it. 
Then they make a second pass with the reclaimer, and right in front of that is dry cement. And that's ground into the road, and that basically bridges wheat base. It's, it's a whole lot cheaper to do that process than it would be to box cut it two feet deep, gravel it. It's a road that's, I'm not saying it's not a through route, it's a bus route, but it's posted so there's no heavy trucking over it. I think this option will do the job for us. They've done it. Uh, one of the ones that, the most prominent one I think was the River Road Benefit, had some structural problems and they did this to it. It's held up well. So. Which section of Thompson Road? That would be right from the intersection of Curtis Road to Timber Ridge. No skimmings is the next one. That was a, a gravel road straight up until 1993. It hasn't been paid since. We need to, to do this just to maintain it. It's getting hard to plow. There's so many deflections in it that that would be a good candidate for straight salt. <laughs> you can't straighten it. <sighs> We've got some major problems on a piece of the Proctor Road. I've been telling you people if you don't think we can put enough money in the roads, go down on the Proctor Road. Probably you don't want to go there right now. It's bad. The Proctor Road is the one that Proctor over Road is, the overpass. Yes. Yeah, they There's a section through the woods that has a real bad base. There's a swamp on one side and a whole lot of pines on the other. It doesn't get any daylight. It's one of the areas we're always chasing the winter time with ice and everything, but it's got a weak base and that's another one that I think, because it's a dead end road, not heavy traffic, we could use the same process as Thompson Road on that. Grind up only 800 feet of it to a second pass with cement, reclaim it, then pave it. $44,000 is only going to buy you 800 feet of that. The rest are culvert relining projects. My grand total was 576, 948, and I guess we're going to get 450, maybe, depending on town meeting. So you can see where we are. We go to the bottom of the list and start crossing them off. Do you, we have copies of his painting. Can I make copies of that, Roger? That, the, the last one that you did? Yeah, I don't have any funky notes on it, do you? I forgot to tell you, Kenny King called the other uh, stop by the other day and said the Proctor Road's in bad shape, Roger. Oh, I'm aware of it. <laughs> but if there's no money, and it's, it's probably right now, with the exception of the Thompson Road, the Thompson Road's not as rough as the Proctor Road, but it's a dead end road, folks. The program that we go by is keep the good roads good and slowly improve the other ones to keep up the standard. It's hard to tell somebody that that lives on a road that bad that there's just no money to fix it. Unfortunately, there isn't. What about um, when, when is the rest of the roads that hit you? Uh, I have to tell you. Oh, you have that one as well? I think that helps us last year having the um, what's that? The, your printouts. When you did last year when we threw the budget <coughs> when we had the your printouts and put the new jobs and jobs were going to be. I, I thought you were going to have that, but it is project two for next year, 2015 and 2016. Depending on what gets cut off this year. The funny part of this program that we're on is one of the factors that you weigh in on these projects is the amount of traffic these roads get. So you would think that a project that doesn't get done this year would falls out, they would go to the top of the list next year. And I've had that come up before and it didn't even make the list the following year because the other roads that were up for it had that much more traffic on them. And that's the biggest weighting factor on the whole program. It seems that there's a lot of, well, what the frosties like that. We have done a couple of roads in the past couple of years. 
completely scrub them two feet deep, put fabric in the bottom, and the bottom is shaped correctly. There's a quarter of an inch of pitch per foot from the center line to the ditch. Put fabric down two feet of gravel and it's frost season. Because right now there's probably about five feet of frost in the roads and we've got two feet of gravel and fabric and we think we're in good shape. Welcome to Maine. <laughs> Thank you for the comments, Tom. My opinion, the town really ought to take a look at possibly not accepting any more new roads whatsoever because it's just added to the infrastructure of the town and it's cost of the town more money. And if we're going to cut the budget back every year, it's just going to put us further and further behind trying to keep these roads. Yeah, and as we, as we get further and further behind, so does the the, um, the expense of repairs and maintenance for roads goes up? And we've also talked to, and it's going to happen at some point, is we could get Route 1 and Mark Avenue. And if we get that, you know, this is just a yeah, the rest of us is drop in the bucket if we get those. The odds of ever getting 111, probably a slim. But there's only two towns in all of York County that don't own Route 1. I got what's one and we're the other one. Because we're not 7,500 population. And if you really believe that the legislature is in such good shape that they won't change that, the stroke of a pen and we could end up with those roads. No way we can we afford them. We can't afford to do what we get on the list, and that was a scale back list. What you have has already been scaled back once. <coughs> Did you meet with DOT yes to yesterday on Long Cabin? Nope. nope. I haven't heard back from him. Really? Really. He's gonna hear back from me though. Well, I had thought he had initially sent an email that said that they would get in touch with you so we could meet yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> What was, the, <coughs> what was the original? The original was about 700000 and I knew that wasn't going to fly. <coughs> well, you, you say that every year. It's a fact. It always comes down to the bottom line. The point Terry's trying to make is we have one in the process that people are trying to get petitioned the board to get approved. There's some, some issues with it. But <coughs> There's another one down Terry's way that's built, the surfaces on it. Three quarters of the places in there are built. I think there's only one lot left. They're going to be in front of the Board of Selectmen sooner or later petition. There's another one on the Long Island Road that's built out. They expect these things to become town roads. There's three right there. We can't afford what we've got now. The rationale at town meeting has to change because as long as I've been involved in anything in town, we have never refused to accept a piece of road when it comes to the town meeting floor. To my knowledge, it's never happened. So it goes to town meeting floor, it's a popularity contest. How many people you get there that want their road accepted? You know, the trouble is the, the developers are coming in, which, hey, you know, they're, they're coming in doing the developers, but they're also, I think, misleading the people that's buying in there saying, yeah, it's going to become a town road. And yeah, the people <coughs> doing taxes, but, you know, it's, it's got to be a point here where we say, we just can't do it. If they want to build in that development, it's going to stay private. Is there any, we can't do anything about that, about the new homes? Not the way the ordinance is written now. <coughs> I don't know. If, I don't know that we'd be able to adopt an ordinance that strictly prohibits roads from being accepted. No, I'm not. I'm not thinking, you can't stop them from building. Right. Roads. I'm not thinking about prohibiting, but can you have the road built to a strict specification so that there's a better chance of it lasting 25 years rather than going to hell in three years? I, no, I, I think that part of it is cured at this point. So the standards are up. Matter of fact, some of them we've got some problems with that are on the private ways, but that's a whole other kettle of fish. But the standard is there. But you got to take a stand at town meeting time and say, hey, we'd love to help you out, folks, but we just can't afford to take care of what we have. Yeah, I think that's your only option at this point. Yeah. You don't. 
I mean, I you could that stand that up and say, we're not going to take any more draft an ordinance, do what you want. It might be a challenge, you might not. Right. But the other side to that is people who live on, the, on private roads pay the same amount of taxes without they do, but, the benefits. But again, the thing, it's their choice to move into that development. Absolutely, absolutely. Right. and I, I think that would be one thing that could be used to um, to battle that whole piece of it. The problem but is I do agree with the way what you're saying. the way these are now, the ones that we're talking about, one is um, I was going to say Roaring Brook, but what's the name of that one off Long Bad Road? Stony Brook. Yeah. Stony Brook Drive. Haley Road is the other one, and Bayway Drive is the third one. They're all built out. Go look at that one off the old Alfred Road. If we ever get that with Hisson's development, there's four phases in that. Cal de Sacks are there, everything. It's already paved. Guess what? We end up with that. That's some hot burn right there. And the problem is, is <coughs> if you were going to do an ordinance that would, that would be to the benefit of the town, if we had to accept roads, it would be to make a time limitation. You've got to base it with an X amount of months. You have to have all the houses built, and you have to have a finished code on there. But these ones like Fairway and uh, the Haley Road, they sit six, seven, eight years with a base code on it, and that's the problem with Fairway Drive is the base code's falling apart. Culverts have been in there. They're galvanized steel. They've been in there since 06. So you're getting old infrastructure before you're even accepting it. And so it would, the only way to make it make any sense is, and it, it would still cost the town money because you're still going to have to go back and pay for them eventually, and you're going to have to maintain them, but it's to get them when they're still fresh. Mm -hmm. And we don't, do, we don't get that. But again, it, you, you, like you just said, you're still going to have to maintain them down the road. Absolutely. It's still adding to. Yeah. <laughs> think, you know, a valid point that we really should have it, you know, private roadways by design. Um, you know, if, if the houses aren't all in in a certain time frame um, from when the road is installed, then it's no longer acceptable, acceptable for um, become a, a public way until the road service is new again. I, I, that's the way Even if it is, somebody I, I, can give you a brand new road and it's beautiful, but you're not going to have to take care of it. I get and that it. costs money. I get it, but that's a way of slowing the you're have to process and buying is a little bit more time. I see what you're saying, but I, I, I'm no lawyer, but I suspect if you start to discriminate against people who build a road now and say, we're not going to accept it, you're going to have a half a dozen lawsuits on you, you know. When um, business picks up, you sure will. Right now, with the economy still being a little slow, you might not have a problem, but it's it would happen. If you started right now saying that any new development <coughs> will stay private, the, the town will not accept it. You know? So, you say so. We have a here. I mean, what do you think? I think that their lawyers would have a field day with yeah, it. Yeah, I think they would. Do that. Yeah. I'll, yeah. I'll throw a question out there to the, to the town managers to see if anybody has an ordinance, anything like that. Mm -hmm. The only thing I can think of to defer the cost to the town would be have an impact fee on the acceptance of a road of X thousands amount of dollars anticipating that next <coughs> road you're never going to recoup. You get enough roads, you're never going to recoup the fact that you need a new truck, you need more material. But maybe there's some towns out there that are addressing it in a way that hasn't been challenged or has been challenged and has won. Um, and I can send out that question to all the managers and see what they have for ordinances. Because I do, I think we are going to run into, if we strictly prohibit any roads from being accepted, they'll determine that as takings or they're going to find a way to get it, force us to have that question on the ballot. The town ought to think can. that either they're going to do that or they're going to have to take and fund the budget. Yeah. The problem with impact fees is this revenue. Where's that going to go? Yeah. Right in the general fund. Well, no, no, those impact fees would have to go specifically they to the would have to be budget. changed so that those things go to that. Directly to that. Do you think they, they don't right now. Do you think these roles will come up at the next town meeting? Anyway? One of them They've got to petition the board just to get 
Is there any way the town could put a moratorium to not accept any town roads for the next amount of months while you study this problem? I mean, I know we've, they've done moratoriums on buildings. And, uh, that's a I said that's a go. Okay, that's absolutely, it's going to slow the process down. That's all. All you're going to do is you know defer it one year, but yeah, I'll twenty be. year more for yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You can only do six months at a time. Yeah. Um, but um, if, if the town needed the time, I yeah. mean, I don't know if that that'll only buy you one town meeting. But I'll and if they get enough petitions, you'll get a special town meeting anyway, so it doesn't matter. I'll throw the There's question. no different in my town. They do the same thing. They accept them all. Five years. How many years? the same process as what we did through a truck last year. It sounds like an extreme amount of money. It's a stainless steel body and I think that's the only way to do these things. We have welded so many times on some of these there's nothing left to weld to. But I've got some budget figures if you guys want to see them. For rebody in the truck that's what is it, sixteen years old? No, that one's not sixteen years old. Uh, yeah, it's close to it. Can anyone put it for the new truck? Just put the numbers on it. Can we get copies of those as well? Or? Yeah. You want the whole thing? That, that's my hand scratching. This is. I put Kenny Punks, uh, Kenny Punks ports. Their numbers on the front page because there's there's ten pages for that. This is where's the one that we're that you're looking at? This one here. Right there. All right. Truck pull. Almost fifty grand. That changes the body, all the hydraulic lines, adds a couple of extra valves in the hydraulic system, and a new hydraulic pump. And how much is it for a new truck for? Hundred and sixty four thousand two hundred and eighty four dollars. Is that completely equipped or do you have that to? That is equipped. That's that's kind of a poor structure. You said 164. 164, 284. 284. For a comparable single axle plow truck. No, no, uh, truck number four. How is the rest of that? The rest of the truck, it's got, it's got 70,000 miles on it. Frame's in good shape. Motor's fair. It's got the same as the other one we did last year. It's It's got another five, six years of a good service in it. Rebody it. At that point with this stainless steel body, you jack that stainless steel body up, put it on a new chest. Rather than completely outfit it a new truck. <coughs> I think you're gonna see that throughout the fleet eventually just the trucks aren't worn out. I mean those two both have about the same amount of miles, seventy thousand. It'll easily go, you know, hundred and twenty to hundred and forty thousand. Um, they don't. It's not like they're an over-the-road truck. So, yeah. at that point, they're pretty much done. And check the body up, put a new chassis under it. But that would be savings than being able just to change over the bodies. Yeah, change because change again, we're looking at right now. It's prices of 160 as opposed to to 50. And this sheet that you have now tells you basically what it what is going. <coughs> We'd be sending a 1998 Gavin chassis truck to whoever the successful bidder is to mount a body and a hydraulic system on. Plowing everything's still fine. Plowing the wings, everything would stay on it as far as that, that part of it. But the other option is, and those are, those are crazy numbers because that's, those are municipal prices and you can buy stuff. 75, 80 cents on a dollar compared to Joe Contractor. You wouldn't believe some of the prices these guys are paying for these nice new trucks to drive down the road. It's nuts. And then when you get those new $170,000 trucks, they come with all the emissions controls and all the computer systems and yeah. all the... Somebody, when they have, have, to, six yeah, they when have, they have to regenerate the, 
the exhaust on, the truck sits there and runs and goes through a, a sequence for 15, 20 minutes. That's nice in the middle of a plow run. Everything we have is pre-emission stuff, so it's halfway decent then, as far as the big stuff. This is this is a mainline truck. It's one that runs every storm. Did it work well for your truck this year? The truck that I drive is the one we did last year. It's I think it's a little more efficient than those front dumps. It seems to use less less material in the same run, but not a decent amount. So it should do something with that money. I don't like these numbers, but that's what reality is. Those bodies lighter than the bodies that were on there? No. No, they don't. The truck still goes over the scale just about the same as it did. So. Yeah. budget uh, as of that last meeting the decision was made that we'd take fifteen hundred dollars from the uh, rural active living assessment grant that we got um, I was told today that the Eastern Trail is going to kick in fifteen hundred dollars uh, for the paving of that and then the remainder of it I was led to believe by the Board of Selectmen we would take out of the Municipal Park Reserve in order to uh, get all of that taken care of so now they want to pay it. The motion at the meeting uh, was well, no pay. They're made. We're going to reconsider. We're going to discuss it again at the next meeting because of the additional fifteen hundred that we found. So we may decide to move ahead and pay it. Um, that'll be up to the board to decide uh, at the next meeting. Which section of the Eastern Trail? Uh, parking along the Eastern Trail on oh, the parking, road. Yes. Yeah, on the now. And Roger calls it the northwestern side, and I'm still confused about that because. Well, the Limerick Road runs north and south. It's on the it west side. The, side. <coughs> the opposite side of town from town hall, yeah, across west. from town. That's right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, that's the right. road runs north and south. See, I get confused in a road. That's if I'm not. That's because they call the turnpike. I'm going. The turnpike's <laughs> not really north and south, but it runs through Arundel. Right. <laughs> so it'll be on the other side, opposite side of town. Um, you know, the the field side towards town hall. Leaving town hall, go down over the hill, and just before the trail on the right hand side. Yeah. Right up against the trail is a spot where we One get five park anyways. Right, exactly. There's room to widen it out there and, and take them off the road. The Any road. other parking would be a lot more expensive because it would involve some drainage issues and maybe some tree work. But that's one where we can get five spots in there. Well, while you're here, the eastern trail. Because I, I live and use it a lot, and I've noticed that um, if you're going into Biddeford, once once you go into Biddeford, it's like very well groomed and maintained, and ours gets really really high really really fast. And I don't know why. Biddeford's got one quarter of a mile of trail to maintain. We get three and a half with fifteen hundred dollars worth of maintenance money. That's the long and the short of it right there. Mm -hmm. It gets mowed several times. And some people would like to see it manicured. But would you would you entertain volunteers Absolutely. doing it? Depending on what they're gonna do. Well if we were to get out there and mow, we could I mean how, it can't the, be only, that. the only problem you have for that is liability. So that's always the Yeah. I mean if Jack didn't tell us and Went out there with his lawnmower and mowed sections of it because he had a little extra time. I'm not going to call you and tell him tell on you. Say, <laughs> but if the liability comes where if you're using town equipment, we got volunteers using town equipment, then that are, are they trained in the operation of that lawnmower? Yeah. Basically, we have to make an appointment to go on there to do anything anyway. Uh, the yeah, guy that I have to call from Unitel. So if somebody was on there at random times, well, Unitel would probably have an issue with it. I wouldn't mind getting out there on a nice sunny day on a weekend. And You'd have to use a sickle thing. 
I don't know. If you train me how to do it, I'll volunteer to do it. Which would be quite funny. You guys are laughing, but... No, only because then you've got the issue with non-employees running a piece of town equipment and yeah. something happens. It's the a can of worms. weekend is probably the worst time in the world yeah. to be doing it as well because you got people with little kids running around. Or even on Jack's day, uh, you get to get away from him and could ride. How many miles is ours? You said three and a half. Three and a half. Three and a half. Goats and all. Goats. So <laughs> what type of volunteer just, uh, work would you like to do on the trail? The, I'm just trying to think. Oh. Any kind of litter patrol, anything like that. Basically, that's pretty much all you could do, because yeah. anything else would involve equipment. So, um, uh, okay. the only way to kind of get around that would be to have. I'm just trying to think. Have a, a private group, friends of the Rundle Eastern Trail, and they have their own equipment yeah. that they use. And they're the ones that do any type of contact with you to tell. Yep. You might be able to get somebody to donate a piece of equipment for those friends to do that work. To use a piece of equipment. But I don't know if that tractor we have sitting around might be donated to a friend's of. Something like that where the liability is completely taken away from the town. And that's going to be the issue. If it's town-owned equipment and there's a volunteer running it, a, we need to pay them because they're working with town equipment. B, we need to train them to use the equipment so that they can't really be volunteers. Yeah, they're all so they to work. And this is all if, the state. If you did find a group that was willing to do that, um, Christ, I even volunteered to do that on some Saturday, and get somebody like maybe Cloutier or somebody who's into the trail that, that has a piece of equipment that could do it, I don't, you know, bring my own weed whacker, you know, do something like that. You could set up a, a volunteer or a friends on a thing. B Y O W W. Or a doctor, you know, a doctor sack in a trail. There was a lot of talk about that originally. And and those those ideas all dried up. Yeah, it's really hard because I. When push I comes to shove, yeah. you know what happens. <laughs> you know, again, in theory, that, it's a good idea. That fifteen hundred bucks is just a drop in the hat. Yep. Yeah. You know, if you take a look at the big picture down the road, you've got miles of fence there, and if you have to start a place in that fence, mm -hmm. it's all going to go at once. Yeah, because it's all put in it. So yeah, if you guys are going to run for place fence, that's fine. Yeah, 15 bucks, 1500 bucks is not going to cover it. From uh, the trees. <clears throat> I mean, I think I counted from the Philippine line where we was working that day, I think there was like 100 sections or something. And that was put by, in there by the Eastern Trail? When they built the trail. Property owners, uh, as that was just on the, the original bit. Limicro. It's not counting everything on the other side. Maybe I'll get a little more involved in those Eastern Trail meetings and try to make these points a little bit better heard because we're not the only town that's going to run into this issue. And like you said, they're all going to go at the same time. And I mean, it's something that you're going to want to look at in the future. It's yeah. there. You're going to have to pay. Spend your five grand, put it on maintenance instead of being a member. But it's not going anywhere. Yeah. It's there and we take care of it. I hate to bring the conversation back to this budget, but if we start, well, if we keep discussing stuff that's <laughs> going to come up five years down the road, we're going to be here till two in the morning. Yeah. Um. <coughs> Thank you, John. <laughs> the, the public works budget, I, we can't really go on the, um, on the reserves and debt at this point, where it's about the other stuff, yeah, the but um, I, I would like to turn the motion to Philip Rogers Public Works. So moved. Okay. So second. Uh, second. All right. All those in favor of approving the Public Works budget at six hundred sixty-two thousand six hundred twenty-one dollars. That's unanimous. Yes. Yeah. Unanimous. Thank you, Roger. Thank you, Roger and Terry. And Terry. Not too heavy right there, Terry. You want to carry a phone for it? Watch out, he's
gonna. <laughs> I'm sure I'll see Terry tomorrow. He's gonna requisition one of those like little little totes on wheels. Principal assistant. All right, so we're gonna move on to. <laughs> Get some sleep, guys. It's not supposed to snow again until Saturday. No, next Friday, I think I saw. Friday, there was something the 14th. I saw. Middle of the week weekend. The way it works. Yeah. <clears throat> well, we got middle of the week, so this weekend's looking good, though. Okay, so. It's got to stop sooner or later. Thank you, gentlemen. 4th of July. Increase. dollars Sorry, say that again. It's increased $5,866, which is fire department. Yes, fire department budget. Um, that was primarily from uh, salary increase. Yep. Yeah, salary increase, FICA retirement. Yep. A little bit over time. Yeah. I did recruit. I, I did increase some of the line items, such as communications and uh, rescue supply and building equipment maintenance, but I also took money out of other line items to offset that, that were to the good. So uh, when I had talked to Todd originally what his plan was for the budget this year, he had said to try to keep it close uh, to zero increase as I could. So uh, in order to do that, I moved some things around a little bit. <coughs> Anything that I increased when I looked at what we'd spent so far, I found it to be uh, beyond the percentage of the budget we were at. So that's the increase in that. The items on such as that, the rescue budget, that the rescue item that's up 500 bucks, uh, went from 12.88.6 to 13.386. We ended up uh, purchasing a, uh, it's called an infusion pump for the ambulance. Uh, it's something that the upper licensed people can use. It's to monitor the, the medications you get while transporting to the hospital. Uh, right now, it's done by syringe, and a couple of the medications that the uh, medics can use now has to be monitored specifically, and what they said they're going to do is eventually it's going to be a requirement of all the medications, like anybody that needs uh, something for their diabetic shock or their epinephrine and stuff like that. Uh, I, wasn't, I don't know exactly what the uh, equipment is going to be required for tubing, syringes and stuff that go with that pump that we're going to use for the year. But my paramedics estimated that $500 would cover it, so that's why that, that's increased. But I did remove it from somewhere else. So. It's another one of those unmanded, uh, unfunded mandates that the state you know, sends down. So, oh, yeah. yeah, by the way, you need to have this, but we're not going to pay for it. So. Yeah, we'd really like to do that to you guys, too. Yeah, oh, yeah. I mean, they got us. I, you know, I bought us a little time. I actually, we were supposed to have it done in November, but we could sign an agreement with uh, neighboring community that had it, which uh, I talked to Todd about, and I signed an agreement with Benefit so we didn't have to go out and absorb it until, uh, well, we just came up March 1st, but even that's uh, going to be put on hold a little bit. I was on honor, but uh, it's not anything that we really wanted to do. It's one of the things we kind of have to do. But, uh, it, it's, it's one of those things that if you need it, it's life-saving. Yeah. And when you say somebody's like this, there's no value. I can't set a value. On it. My problem with the whole situation was, I said, you know, what is the need for a run to compare to the cities and stuff like that? That was the big glitch I had with this whole, you've got to have this thing. Yeah. And uh, there, there really is no answer for it. You know, Bedford might use it twice or three times a month. A rundle may use it three times a year. But when you need it, you need it. And, and there's no argument. I mean, I'd be, I'd just to tell you that, oh, by the way, you know, your per you know, your family member passed away because we didn't have this piece of advice that we were told we had to have. And, and actually, the way it stands now, we can, the state can really raise some markets with us if we don't do it. So, but, uh, but that, that's that. That was the, the reason I had to increase that. And like I said, I had to go to my minutes to ask. Uh, roughly what they thought the cost would be, and they're estimating $500 should cover anything we needed on that. And the other two things that I increased was I increased building maintenance and equipment maintenance. Uh, we took a beating on our, on our equipment maintenance year. We had to do some upgrades to our jaws, jaws of life. Uh, 
And unfortunately, that's not cheap. We ended up sending them out. They brought down a, a power unit for us temporary to use. Is so, that so that they cut through the new composite yeah. materials? Yeah. So, Magnesium, is it that they put yeah, in the Yeah, it's something so like that. Cor cor they got coronium and boronium and everything. They got all that. that. And that's another thing, just to make the budget committee aware, that unit is 10 years old. 10 years old. And yeah, I think it's right around the same age as. It's three rescue. Oh three, so three oh three is two thousand one. So it's about twelve years old. Jaws. We got new jaws, but the machine, right. the, the power itself, unit power itself. Oh, yeah. So and, uh, and one thing, you know, I know I kind of have to say, but the one thing about this power, this particular power unit, and I believe Goodwin's Mills has the same one. Yeah. If it is on any sort of incline, it shuts down. It has to be flat at the level. So if we're, so if we're extricating somebody out of the vehicle and it's on a hill, you literally have to have somebody hold that power unit level so it does not shut down. Yes. So we, you know, or if you got a vehicle that's partially in a ditch. Yeah, right. yeah and, and it's on the shoulder of the road, and any, <laughs> any sort of incline it shuts down on you. So you're going to have it, it has to be level. Do you, do you have a guesstimate as to what that replacement cost of that unit is? I, you can buy a whole unit for about 25. Twenty-five, but that's the you know that would be the cutters and spreaders and, and the power unit. What they're doing now is they come out with it, it's a better power unit than, than the power this. Uh, the one we have now has two single holes that feed into it. They have one now that holds them actually together. There's still two hoses, but they're they're inclined into one wrap too, so you don't have them wrapping around each other. And it, it, it's just a better unit. Uh, the power unit is is bigger, so it runs. Two, two tools at the same time instead of one. Uh, I assume, pretty sure the one that they have here is, is similar to the one that we had before. Is that you, you can pick one or the other. Yep. You can't run two things at the same time. So uh, I'm going to say a county would probably go around ten to twelve thousand dollars. But if down the road in the future, we, you know, the next year or two, if we want to buy a truck, we could look at buying that at the same time. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, they're cleaning the floor. The other thing is, this was the every other year we have to flow test our regulators and our gauges on our air packs. Uh, it's a standard, we don't have a choice there again. Uh, the company comes down, they do all 18 of them right here. They flow test them, they make the repairs on the spot. Uh, that usually costs us a couple thousand dollars depending on what it is. But it's all built in, so it's just one of those things. And then again, we're going to keep up as far as uh, buying. Uh, replacing area bottles, they have a lifespan on. Rather than buy all 25 of them, like when, I guess they bought a big. Uh, before I came, I guess they bought a big, like 20, 25. Yeah, because originally they got a grant. And yeah. They bought all yeah. brand new bottles, so yeah. all those bottles expired at the same time. Right. So we're trying to do it over a period of time. Like uh, I think the first year I came, they bought. They'd already bought six. I bought six last year, and we're going to continue to do that. So, but they're they're eight nine eight nine hundred dollars a piece. So. I mean, it's almost four, four or five grand every time. How long buy. do they last again? Fifteen years. Fifteen years. There was some talk, talk about increasing it to twenty-five, but they never have. Okay, left and right at fifteen. So. And they won't recertify those tanks, right? Those have to go. No, they have to be destroyed. Actually, they have to be cut in half. And forward thinking into the future, I mean, they're just always going to be on the cycle with the bottles. Yeah. Well, I, you know, that's my thought. Is we just continually buy five bottles <coughs> a year, and, and we should be able to maintain. Rather than have to come in and say, "Look, I need to buy another twenty thousand, like twenty thousand dollars worth of bottles." That's what I'm hoping. Uh, the other thing that uh, that I'm looking at is that one of the things we're required to do is, is and it, it's not any increase in the budget. This is just something for future reference. Is that one of the things we do is we provide perfective equipment. We have to. It's a standard. We don't have any choice. Uh, there's a whole bunch of different uh, equipment out there, so we try to buy something that's. That's good equipment, but it's not the best, you know, it's not the super best because we don't have the fire. One of the things I totally believe in is that when you wear your air pack, you have a mask. And some people have certain very typical small masks, or they have the small faces so that require a small mask. Those people will usually buy their mask and give it to them as part of their equipment because they're the only ones that can use it. What I like to do is I like to eventually, over the process, for all of my people that structurally firefight, is eventually issue them a mask 
which is just like giving them a helmet, giving them a cold. Because then, I, I just have this, this phobia about breathing in a mask that somebody else said, yes, we do bring them back, and yes, we clean them, and yes, we have bleach and stuff like that, but, you know, we go out and spend all this money on nice coats and protect everything, and, you know, you got this thing on your face that everybody and their brother's breathing into. So. Yeah. And, and, then and then you do, if it's something that's assigned to you, and you're going to be using it right. all the time, right. you're going to take better care of Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Absolutely. And they, they only run, only, I should say they only. And they're really, you know, they're about to cost of a helmet. The helmet's about $250, the mask will be $250. You know. But I think it's a health, a safety issue. It's, just a, it's a health issue. If you sneeze, you have a cough. I mean, like in Dave, I, I'd like to think, because of his respiratory problem, he probably wouldn't put it back on. But if he did, if he had his own pack, if his own mask, then when he cleaned it or whatever, at least if he didn't get it all clean and he put it on himself, the only one he's infecting is himself. Yes. Right now, the way it is, except for those few that have a special size mask, they're using the ones that are on the truck that we clean every time we use them. So, this is not any increase in, in the budget. I'm just adding this into the list, and, and we'll do it over a period of time. But not everybody needs one. How much are the masks? About two fifty a piece. This is a deal where you give them to the guys that are going to be in fighting the fire. You know, somebody's out directing traffic doesn't need. How somebody. many would we need? Oh, uh, I'd say we probably got twenty. Or 25 eventually that we'll have to buy, but I just we've had an influx of young guys that have come in and they're all in classes right now. So we're going to have them hopefully over the next two years, we'll have another four or five guys on. Whatever, whatever we can absorb in the budget without, you know. And if, if the year comes up that we just need other stuff as priority, it, it's not a big issue. You know? This is just one of those things that I just wanted to make. I think it's very important that we should look that way. I mean, we protect their heads, we protect their hands, we protect their feet. Yeah, how about protecting their lungs? You know? yeah. The, um, the crack in the fire department. Yeah, we talked about that today. Uh, we're we're going to we're gonna repair it again this yeah. year. But we'll say, Terry, Terry fixed it last year, and he wants to know why you were peeking in the windows over there, because he said that's the only reason you could have known that it was there. Was you can in see it from the outside. I am not going to do that day. Um, but no, he thought it was repaired. We went out to look at the crack. And <coughs> so he's going to get public works back over there. We may have to drill and pin it. Say we're going to probably have to open it up and yeah. put some type of a sealer in there for us. But it appears to just be the facade. They put that brick facade on. There's nothing, didn't appear that there was anything structurally wrong with the building. It's just when they put those bricks on, that's just the looks. And the bricks aren't holding the building the way they should. So last time Terry and Public Works fixed it, we're gonna have them go back over there when the snow melts and take a look at it to see if they can do a little better than this time. I had a simple situation in Portland in one of the buildings just a couple of months ago there were pictures of it all over the uh, Portland Press Herald where the bricks were actually coming apart. It was like mm -hmm. up on the third floor, floor yeah. and fall on the sidewalk. Yeah. They had to shut down sidewalks for an extended period because, yeah, people were almost getting hit. So, but as, as the building gets older, it, it takes a little bit more money to, I mean, you need to do some painting, there's some sheet rock that needs to be in bed, and uh, we'll let you know that we do have Bill, a, what year did a we compound build the fire station. Yeah, that stays flexible even when it dries. I don't remember. Flexible. I'm sorry, what's that? She asked me what year we built the fire station. Uh, I said, I don't remember. Many, 98. 98 is when the bond was issued for that fire station. 10, 16 years old. And it's got shingles on the roof, right? Yeah. 2008, 2008. 98, 2008. Yeah, so 16 years old. Yeah. Asphalt shingles? Asphalt, yes. Yeah. So 25 years? 25. Uh, probably 30 years. 30 years? Okay, so we still got some more time. I haven't noticed any given. No, I haven't either. No, did you see anyone you were up there? Oh, you weren't up there. No, they just. No, I don't know. Never. Um, specifically designated for, for that. Okay. Yeah, because I don't want to see it go in reserve and then yeah. disappear. Well, yeah. I don't know what's in there, but if somebody else comes in, I don't want to spend it on something. Yeah, absolutely. 
We do. We do have one uh, one door. We got uh, the uh, pad outside that gets lifted because of the frost. We're oh, assuming it's going. Yeah, we're assuming it's going to go down when when the season smooths out. I hope. If it doesn't, then there again, maybe it might be some public works can. Does it have it out front of the, the bays or? No, it's off to the side. I talked to Roger. Is that maybe a drainage issue? No, there seems to be a line of clay that runs. If you pull into the town hall, hall, town hall parking lot, you notice there's a huge frosty there. Well, it almost runs in a straight line across the parking lot, jots over a little by the side door at the fire station and runs down the front of the building and over to where that front entrance is because that concrete pad is cracked this year. The side door concrete pad is shifted and the parking lot's a lot worse than it's been. Like Roger said, with the, the much colder weather we've been having, frost has probably gotten five or six feet down this year instead of the typical four feet. That tends to jar things around a little bit. More. <coughs> Once the frost gets out of, out of the ground, we'll be able to reevaluate it. And Donna said she'd go out there with a grinder. And yep, grind Jump up and down on yeah. it and make that. <laughs> the, good, the door only opens about this much. But the good thing is uh, it's, it's not... It's not a code violation because every other door in the building, I mean, there's three other doors you can get out of it. You technically only need one for exits. It's so if you got those big doors on the front of the Right. Well, yeah, yeah technically, <laughs> technically you need two, but I mean, uh, that door is In fact, I thought of that for some reason just dawned on me today. I'm like, hold on, I don't know if there's an exit sign over or not, but we got to do away with it because you can't get out that door. Well, you can. Is that that side door that we use when we have elections? Well, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, when we had the election, during the, during the, last the, election, the door kept. People would open it and it yeah. would catch. Well, it's, got, it's even got worse. It's, worse. I mean, it's, it's only like yeah. you can you you can't walk through there this way. You've got to go through sideways. Uh, and and it's, it's gotten kind of it's gotten yeah. better though because I saw Reynolds out there the other day and he got it open to the point where he could get out. But <laughs> it's it it wouldn't be it's not going to be a yeah, ridiculous doesn't week. carry out around a lot of groceries. So. It's <laughs> it's good. it's it won't be a ridiculously expensive fix. Right. Worst case scenario, we can yank that slab out of there. Pitch it down a little bit more, still meet the requirement for code on the step, and be able to fix that problem. Uh, but it's like Roger and I were talking about, it, it seems like that frost is coming down so deep this year, it's just shifting things that normally don't shift. Because if you're not paying attention, you can probably catch air on that on that frost even in the. It might be oh, oh it's wicked the material. We need Never hour. seen it like that. Would it would it make? I mean, if it becomes an issue with the door and the heaving right there in front of the door, wouldn't it make sense just to move the door? It would be a lot more money than it yeah, would be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the slab. I don't yeah. know. No, yeah, be, You'd have to chop hold it. That's a concrete building, so no. No, it'd be yeah. cheaper to pull the slab and put sand and better material underneath to try to fix the problem. I could go, I suppose we could go like the old grad station, put a door in the overhead. There you go, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I guess I'm dating. No, I remember so that. It would be more material than anything. I mean, I think Public Works would do it. And it, and it may, it, 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 my thing is that if it does it once, it's going to do it again. Yeah. So, you know, and obviously Todd and Roger have already talked about it. I mean, we're aware of it. <coughs> so. And we're not going to be here for an election anytime soon. In the garage bay, we have just plain old cement. And there is there any epoxy or anything? No, that's just, uh, that's just, they never sealed it or anything. So. It's actually pretty, it hasn't hit it or I know, but it just, I, I, I grew up, my father was a police officer. Mm -hmm. The police department was always next door, and we always used to go see the fire trucks. And it instilled in my mind is the shiny floor <laughs> and, the, and the fire department base. They sweep them all. They, yeah, they, you know, it's it, shiny. If when they put it in originally, if they just sealed it and put something down, I would say, you know, that's fine. But now that it's got 16 years on it, I, I don't think it's worth, it's worth the money to do that. I really don't because it's just, I mean, there it's it's been there for 16 years. It's got some cracks in it, the best you can do. It's, it's a, it's a, well, story. it's the flooring is always the last part to get. Yeah, so, Anyways. you know, I just, I mean, I understand what you're saying, but if you had a thing, once you go do that's another thing to maintain. I know when Bedford did this, they did this so nice that they made it into a skating ring. They had to go around and redo it. So. But they got a little carried away with this. When they built that new station, they put this nice. Oh, yeah, put this nice water. First time it got wet. Woo! -hoo! See you later. It might be a little bit easier for cleaning it. You're right. It would be. And, you know, I don't know. I, uh, I don't. 
I'd have to talk to somebody who wears concrete. I don't know if you can seal them after that that much time or not. It would really work. I think you can actually. There's there's a cleaner. Yeah, you can clean it, then you. Can well, there's a cleaner that you put down on it, and then you seal it with the epoxy, and it it looks really nice and it looks really clean. And I, I just think like where we have the um, the tree lighting and all of that. Um, people, I mean, we need to start taking a little bit more pride into our buildings. No, no, I understand what you're saying, and I, I would, totally so it would actually be nice if we had a real nice block of, I'm sure the guys that sweep it would love it, but, you know, I, and I, and it, it's a typical of a small town, the building is used for everything, but, you know, it's a fire station, you know, and I don't, and I don't mean to play that down, but, you know, you, 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 you want to save money, you got to. I'm not expecting a dance hall when I go to Right, you know, you, if, if it's a bad year of money, you need to, you know, to take a look at that because it's all, it's all going to cost money. Do we no, I that, that seriously can be a safety issue, too, because if you've got guys coming back from a fire who are soaking wet and their boots are wet and they hop off that fire truck onto a nice greasy floor, you're going to wind up with somebody with a busted hip or a fractured knee or something. You, you, you want a floor in a workspace like a firehouse that's got some traction to it. But, um, it, it's, the, the look, it, it's all very well to have nice looks, but when you're in a workplace, believe me, some traction goes a long way to the everybody you know, in The other piece. thing is, we get a little oil and stuff on the floor now, it, it, yes, but if you mop it up, it kind of, it, it's not as slippery as if it was sealed and, and coated yeah. over. It's not as slippery. Uh, you know, so I do understand what you're saying, and if I ever think they have added on or built another one, it might be something to consider to do with yep. the time. Oh, I have a question. Yes, sir. In regards to communications, mm -hmm. we set up now on, I know there was talk about, uh, instead of putting up a new tower <coughs> and everything for here, that we can kind of add on to another tower that's being used over in Waterboro. Right. Mm -hmm. that, that I have not pursued the one in Waterboro because the neighboring town who I was working with, Goodman Mills, has put theirs up there and they're having some issues. So I didn't want to invest any money. Well, I didn't even know how much money it was going to be invested in. It was going to be enough food. I didn't want to go that route until we could find out what their interference problem is up there and why they're having so much trouble with their leaders. They've actually gone and put uh, what they call miniature receiver, uh, repeaters in the trucks to try to overcome their, their issue. And I, I don't even know what the issue is. It's some type of interference. We noticed it today on the fire they had. We had a heck of a time trying to talk to them. And they were only, you know, 2,000 feet down the road. We couldn't talk to them. I could talk to them from two miles away, but I couldn't talk to them from 2,000 feet. So uh, I'm kind of leery of investing and in putting us up, way up on the top of a mountain if we're going to pick up some interference. The other thing we ran into is we had, uh, there's a bus company down in Yarmouth, Mass, on the Cape, who was somehow sending some weird noise well, over our so it was like a digital so that, yeah it's like a digital something you know, over our they like the Mexican radios in the 50s or yeah you know <laughs> and our radio guy actually tracked it down we, we actually spent he actually spent six hours tracking it down because we couldn't find it right around right, right, the band yeah he said yeah we're actually, people were, were calling up thinking it was a terrorist uh, but anyways and it was funny. <coughs> uh, but they finally found out it was a bus company down there who was supposedly licensed for like 30 watts they were using 100 they supposedly crank it down and every once in a while. I heard it the other day. It's first time I've heard it. I haven't heard it in quite a while. No, I picked it I, up. I'll tell, tell you what, 2 o'clock in the morning, if you, you know, you, you know, if you were doing an overnight shift at the firehouse, 2 o'clock in the morning, that would come over those speakers. You'd be like a cat, you know, clinging from the ceiling. That's how bad it was. <laughs> so if we're picking it up here, there was no way I was going to stick that up on Austin Mountain. <coughs> so. If I might add also, and I could be wrong, correct me if I am, the narrow banding problem that was perceived didn't turn out to be as bad as it was correct. we thought it was. And that was the theory for having to go up another 60 feet at Town Hall, was when we narrow banded, we were going to lose all of this range. Right. And as far as I know, and you can speak to that much better than I can, but from who I've spoken to, they said it wasn't as big of a problem no, as we the thought. Narrow band and the, there's some dead areas in town. Yeah. But my thing is that, you know, and I know uh, Slagman Labby said something about the pursuing, again, the cell tower for you, and, and I had some problems with cell tower, but uh, Public Works has their own tower. Yep. I consider homeless in the Public Works, 
I mean, I listen to trucks on my, you know, on my scanner at home. So it's a good area. The, pro the problem is they're on a different radio frequency. They're on VHF, we're on UHF. Well, VHF is get more distance where you is. So, but I'm, I'm thinking that <coughs> maybe we can get on the tower with them. I don't know if, if we need to. Or the other thing is I can hear Kennywood Court too. Like uh, they're sitting in my kitchen. So, and that seems to be where our deadhead is, is down on that. So maybe I can get on to see them. Maybe we can work a deal with them and put a small repeater down there rather than go. But, uh, so it, I'm still in limbo here of how to do this because I don't want to spend a bunch of town taxpayers' money on something that's not going to work. I mean, yeah, we've got some dead areas in town, but we've got some ways to get around it. Uh, we, I've talked a bit of it. I've talked to Goodwin's Mills. We can use the effort that we want. So, uh, so right now it's kind of on hold until I can come up with a small Okay. I, I just don't want to invest a bunch of taxpayer money and a bunch of stuff that's in our world. I know, I know the chief in the building mills is pulling his hair off because we don't know why this is not working. So. Does anybody else have any more questions on the fire department budget? Okay. okay, so we move on to uh, fire department capital equipment. So, uh, 40000 last year, um, that's up to the 50000 yep. which faces me. <coughs> um, and then we have the... Also part of the MC conversation. Yeah. That one didn't increase. It did not. Uh, we haven't used the entirety of those budgets in a while. Um, and in going through this budget, the increases were calculated on full-time and permanent part-time employees and not on um, rescue per diem and volunteer fire EMP. Volunteer fire EMP specifically because we haven't expended the entirety of those lines um, and for rescue per diem funds, that's feedback that I got last year from a lot of people at town meetings, after town meetings, saying that they'd like to see that stay steady for a year or two. Um, this year, if we can do that, and we can also realize the additional revenue that I'm expecting from the ambulance, then we can justify, once again, adding um, the cost of living adjustments to the per diem to the uh, EMTs. But as currently, the way I'm bu budgeting this year, we're budgeting an additional $20,000 in revenue for the ambulance. Right. Um, and this, the current fiscal year, we're going to exceed what we budgeted by probably ten to 15000 So. I, don't, I think I might have explained this at the last meeting, but we just went from uh, the a la carte menu to bundle, and they believe that we can increase the uh, collections by about 6 to 10 percent. So that'll help us out. That to keep running like we are. Exactly. We'll be doing it, being in good shape. Um, Rescue was not in quite a bit. Mm -hmm. This winter has seemed like it just has been a bad year out of flus. And we've been out in all a lot of elderly people. The reoccurring places, you know, people just sit, sit, and sit. So I swear, I, one day they ran like five calls, which, I mean, it happens, but it's, it's getting to be more and more consistent. I was talking to a couple of guys from, uh, a guy from soccer today, they had two days where they ran 18 calls one day and 22 the next, which is unusual for them. They run six to eight a day, it just went crazy. Yeah. So I, I don't know, there's been a, the last week and a half, there's been a bunch of stuff about. Yeah. It's off of the halls, goodness knows the children, so. Yeah. Um, Biden today. Yeah, goodness knows the children. Sorry, no time. I'll entertain a motion for the fire department. Okay. <coughs> I would like to make a motion to approve fire department uh, for $244,892. Is there a second? I'll second it. Um, I have to abstain. Yep. All those in favor? You don't have to go to my house. Go on, Mike. And the, uh, the capital equipment and the, the other volunteer and rescue pretty funds, those are going to have to wait until that article. Yep. 
Thank you for coming in. Oh, no. Thank you. you. Thanks for, uh, yeah, I'm going to see my doctor again. Good luck. Yeah. Well, at least he probably won't tell me I'm elderly. <laughs> that was the last visit. <laughs> this time he's going to tell you the correct. No, no, that was a fill-in doctor. My doctor was on vacation. I said, you know, I've been sick for two weeks. I can't get over this thing. And the guy said, well, you know, it's the elderly act. <laughs> well, what, are you, what are you saying? Did you tell him this elderly is going to hit him pretty hard? Yeah. Yeah. I think he's older than I am. <laughs> <laughs> I have to admit, I laughed at that one. So did I. My wife thought it was hilarious. Yeah. Would it be the pleasure of the board to go until 9 o'clock and then we'll close the meeting? Are you? Well, I think we could go through the rest of the budget and Get as much done as we possible. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Let's do it. Okay, we will start off. Um, I recommend starting on closed town expenditures on general government. That's where I was at. Beautiful. I've got some adjustments on revenue, but let's, uh, let's hit it. Okay. Um, okay. Um, you need to learn how to get it. Yeah, I didn't even think of that, Sean. I was going to write little numbers for you. Yeah, right there, expenditures. So if you want to go through and select an article, Planning board article appeals to go right down the line. Uh, if you have any questions, concerns, comments, I'll be happy to answer them. If not, let's hit it. Okay. Um, well, the board selectman's budget has not changed. Correct. I don't see any future like, uh, issues with, or any issues with not approving. I see an issue if we don't include this amount. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Um, you threw a couple more double negatives in there? Yeah. <laughs> and I would entertain another motion to approve that. And I think, you know, because we've already gone over this budget. So moved. Is there a second? And all those in favor? Yeah, I was going to say, John's going to raise his hand. He's just writing. It's unanimous. Okay. <coughs> the planning board budget. Um, it's only, it's, I don't know, it's increased. $20. Dollars. Yep. Use those subscriptions. <laughs> Southern Maine. No, Southern um, Maine Regional Planning and Development Council uh, went away from taking funds from the state, and so they increased. <laughs> I don't know what the state was giving, you know, giving them, but it only went up 22 bucks. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'll move we uh, accept the planning board. I will second that. Okay. Uh, is there any discussion? No. All those in favor? Okay. Uh, we're going to go down to the appeals board. Um, that's remaining the same, $666. And I would actually Picture. entertain a motion to make that $667. No, no, no. <laughs> so, so you want to raise the board's salary? Or actually we can reduce it by a dollar. Either way, whatever makes you happy. <laughs> I kind of like the number myself. <laughs> <laughs> you would. <laughs> Make advertising and printing two hundred and ninety-nine dollars instead of three hundred. That that works. John, what, John, do you like the number? I like six sixty-six. Okay, a okay. nice like round number, easy to remember. All right. <laughs> Not particularly. <laughs> Dave, how do you feel about the number? It doesn't bother me. All right, Melanie, you've been outvoted. <laughs> okay, so I'll move to accept it. Do I hear a second? I will second that. Okay. okay. I don't think there's any more discussion. <laughs> <laughs> All those in favor? Union analysts. All right. Uh, we have professional services, and that was reduced. Professional services. Down the services went down because of elections. We're not going to have as many elections this year, and so that has <coughs> been adjusted accordingly. We're saving money on those new ballot counting machines. All right. I'll make a motion to accept the professional services budget. I will second that. Okay, all those in favor. Would have seconded it, would have seconded it. Oh, the salaries. Though. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to be straight up with you. I got a contract to renegotiate with the Board of Selectmen, and I'm hoping they're going to give me a little more money. So that, that you can approve that, and that, uh, in the event it gets approved at that amount, if the Board of Selectmen doesn't think I'm worth what I'm going to ask, we won't spend all of that money. I only say that because I Well, we it. have a, a selectman here to, to credit Todd. I, I hope so. I believe that he's going to be 
he's worthy of a raise because um, one, he's thought of the big pipe. No, no. All kidding aside, I, I think you know, this this budget. I looked at it and um, I had my skeptical eyes as I was looking it over. And by the time I was done with it, I was like, "Wow!" I was very much impressed. So. Well, I think the selectmen have decided one that yes, we we want to keep him. So it's going to be what he puts in the contract that's going to tell us whether or not how much we want to keep him. <laughs> you don't have a lot to worry about, Belmont. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we, that, haven't, that's we haven't seen that contract yet. Yeah. But other I than that... I started working on it this weekend. There's, like I said, there's no major changes. There's just a few things in there that I'd like to... I'd like to put a clause in there that if we haven't, like this contract I have now, there's no clause where if we haven't negotiated within six months of the end of the contract, it's assumed that it'll extend. That's something I'm putting in there. Um, and other than that, it's going to be a give and take, and I'm not looking to take the town to the cleaners at all. Um, are, are we going to have it in there that, because we had a problem with this before, that this contract supersedes and makes Mellon void any other contract. Yes, we are. So and each contract will be a brand new contract. Yes, absolutely. We won't be adding bits and pieces. No. So so legally, if you had to go back, nobody can say, well, we have to go back to the original contract, or yeah. each contract will be its own individual contract. Yeah. Thank you very much, mm. I appreciate that. I do the same thing for the budget board. You've got to run next year. Yeah. I do want to lead somebody else to the draw. Okay. Or are you just in the second and you need to know? I'm just in the second and okay. I'll make a motion to accept the town hall budget as proposed. I will second that. <laughs> <laughs> All those in favor, I'll ask it for you. Thank 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 you. Yeah, and as we discussed, I'm, I'm trying to more accurately reflect the, the, what I'm experiencing in the you know three years I've been here, discharges, transfers, liens. Um, one of the reasons that that statute line, the, no, the note number five went from 6,300 to 5,000. We used to spend $1,000 a year buying hard copies of the main state statutes that are antiquated as soon as you buy them. I access them online now. We don't have hard copies. That's what the attorneys are for. That's why we pay them big bucks. So that's a good portion of what went down there. Let me just scroll through here real quickly. Public officials' liability spoke to Jeff Cole. We were over budgeting for that. Postage, since the last meeting, I did change that. Uh, postage went from, it was at 6000 I brought it back up to 7000 I don't know if that's since the last meeting, but that was since my initial budget I gave to the selectmen. <laughs> um, so the number I have, bottom number I have is 85130 Is that what you all have? Yeah, yeah. Well, yep. yeah. Okay. Well, I, I move we accept that. that. So, uh, well, I, I do have one question. Okay. Where did it go? Can you hit somewhere? Uh, yeah. Um, Building maintenance going down yep. two thousand. Yep. Uh, we building. Are you saying the hell with it and wait for the <laughs> <laughs> It's about the size of it. Mine as well. Um, no, in you know, in the building that we're in, the only system that I was really concerned about is the furnace. I had really I had champions come in and just go soup to nuts in that thing this year. They said we shouldn't have any issues. If there's any major malfunctions of the furnace in that building, we have. A reserve account that we can use for that, but I don't want to budget for having to replace that um, out of that account, and so that's why I decreased that. And equipment repair and maintenance went down as well because we replaced the server this year, and that was a big portion. That was a four thousand dollar outlay. Um, so it's it, little things here and there that might go wrong with the equipment, but I think we can safely cover that within the six thousand dollar limit. Advertising and printing. Yep. 
zero expended, is that because of the, it can't be because of the time of what books? No, advertising and printing will actually start being expended now because we'll be having public hearings and things like that. Um, and I believe Rebecca made some adjustments after this last uh, expensive revenue report that you saw that actually reflects some expenses there. Is it in this packet? No, it's that sheet there, but she just, that one is as of February 19th, I think. After she reconciled the books for the month of February, we made some adjustments, so the next one you see, you'll see some expenditures out of the advertising. advertising okay. Account. So we have a John Bell motion. Yeah, or somebody. Maybe. Um, John already did. John made a motion? Yeah. You did? I'm yeah. sorry, I did not hear. Yeah. I'll second it. <laughs> I'll hold it against you. Okay. <laughs> okay. 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 All those in favor? <laughs> Actually, starting to believe you all when you said you like the budget. <laughs> Made me nervous with that. I'm not going to let you live that one down. Um, increase with salaries and insurance in this line. Um, planning and code enforcement. Yes, yes Okay. No other major increases there. Health insurance, uh, office supplies stayed the same. Everything else stayed the same. Um, and I think I spoke to Tab, Jim, and Beth, and they are comfortable with what we're using. So, a uh, question with salaries going up, yep, but retirement's going down. Yes, because of uh, that was another calculation error from last year. In my salary spreadsheet, there was a it's five and a half percent. No, it's six and a half percent, and the, there was a rounding error in my spreadsheet. They excel sometimes, I don't know, sometimes they get rounding errors and if I don't double check all the numbers, that was overstated for this current fiscal year. That's why I went down. Okay. Will we accept the year of planning code enforcement assessor? Mm -hmm. I will second that. Is there any yeah. other discussion? <laughs> Sorry, there is. Uh, I'm already ready to do it. Come on. <laughs> Let's go. So all those in favor. It's that new haircut of these. <laughs> We already did the fire department. department. And we're Civil services. services. Civil services ambulances is uh, ambulance is six percent. Six percent of billing. Seven. Seven percent of billing. I'm sorry. Seven percent of billing. Animal welfare is a state requirement to have somewhere to send the dogs. Um, civil emergency prep. There was discussion as to whether or not we should eliminate that. If it is the pleasure of the board, I think we can get away without that two hundred dollars. Uh, Peace App and Dispatch will not change. Uh, that's a contract with the city of Bedford. I would like to remove the that $200. 39750 Motion to Do remove. Do I have to abstain from this one? No. No, you don't. No. Because you're, you're not our EMA director, so okay. you're good. And ambulance, you, you have nothing to do with building, so you're fine. Okay. Motion for to I'll make a motion to approve civil services for thirty nine thousand seven hundred and fifty, taking up that two hundred for civil emergency preparedness. Sir, second. I'll second. Wait a minute. Uh, we're, oh, oh, sorry. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'll second. Uh, Dave beat you to it. Oh, oh sorry. <laughs> it's a second race. <laughs> Thank you. I heard Dave. I didn't hear you before. <laughs> All those in favor. Yeah. Cemeteries. Cemeteries didn't change because last year the part-time seasonals got a salary increase, and so this year there will be no salary salary increase for those part-time seasonals. So fifty-seven seventy-five is what it, what we will spend to mow the cemeteries. Yes, it is. <laughs> um, we have a couple cemeteries that I know of have accounts that go with them. Yes. Somewhere in the town hall there were some pass books or yep. something. Yeah, we're only allowed to spend the interest. Yeah. And that's actually something I'm going to discuss with the Board of Selectmen maybe at the next meeting. The next time we dive into the budget, what I'd like to do, <coughs> right now they're just in pass books. I'd like yeah. to put that in like a five year C D. Uh, yeah, a five year C D because we it'll be fifteen years before there'll be enough interest in there for us to spend on anything. So I'll take that to the selectmen because we're getting like a penny a month. 
and we won't be getting much more than that. We could probably get 2% on that money if we invest it for a little bit longer term. But it isn't that much. Do we have to leave it in those in cemetery yeah, the accounts? Way the, state, the way the state statute is written yeah. is we're only allowed to spend the interest. interest. So we can't close those accounts and use them on something else. Okay. But I think there are what, two? There are two. There yeah. are two. Can we combine them? We can combine them yeah, and we long? can put them in a longer term investment vehicle. Uh, $1,300 and yeah. $600. Yeah. And Not much. I, I, the reason I know so much about it, when I was in Hollowell, we had a <coughs> cemetery reserve account that had over a million dollars in it. And we were only allowed to spend the interest. And they were wanting to open another cemetery and use the funds to invest in that other cemetery. And they said, no, you can only use the interest. Well, that million dollars is supposed to stay there in perpetuity. I'm not sure why, not sure how they were ever going to tap into those funds. Well, how did we get this money? They would well, the the Curtis Cemetery, uh, the people who did the Curtis Cemetery, um, and I don't remember what they, I think it's called McGregor or something, or that that was the name, but it's the Curtis Cemetery up there, uh, right right there on the corner by the Jones Farm. Yeah. Um, someone who did that cemetery or buried someone in that cemetery set up that account for the care of the cemetery. And uh, and I don't remember what the other cemetery is, but someone sets up an account. If you buy a lot now at a cemetery, you can give that cemetery so much money for perpetual care, and that's in effect what it is: is that it was set up for perpetual care. And unfortunately, we don't sell lots of the cemeteries anymore. It's only family members that yeah. go through the state if they're gonna. I don't know if it's. I don't know when the last time somebody's been buried in one of the original cemeteries. I think, uh, I think Dana's parents are buried there in the cemetery Either on really. the, on yeah. down there on the Curtis Road. All right. That's the Waterhouse Cemetery, I think. Yep. Yeah. I think his I think he said his parents are buried down there. <laughs> but I I don't ever remember anyone being buried there in the Curtis Cemetery. No. I mean that's been the same way. Uh, since I can remember, since what it would have been 1958, 1957, because my father in law used to take care of it. Um, got a question about the, uh, I may have asked some previous years. Flags. Yes. <laughs> you got that said in previous years. Um, if the American Legion or somebody wants to talk to me about that, we can find funds to actually be able to take care of that, to purchase the flags if you'd like. And or don't you donate the flags, or how does that work? As we did talk about um, <coughs> what we normally do since our post it's kind of a it's a candy bunk port memorial post, but half the members are in Rumble, half the members are in the candy bunk port. Um, because in 1959, when yeah. Or I don't know. No, you guys can stay after we've got the budget. Right? We'll talk. Okay, we'll talk. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a motion for the 5775? I'm sorry. I'll move for 5775. I'll second it. Okay. <laughs> 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 I got Sean. I got Sean. Make his day. All those in favor. That was. Social services at 5800 per rent Wendy's request. Contingency account, as you all, we've discussed this, so 15800 A motion to move. I'll move. second. All those in favor? 5000 um, I'll move to approve the 5000 is there a second? I'll well, second it. Oh, Billy Mitchell. <laughs> All, right. All those in favor. And are you abstaining? Uh, no, you haven't. You haven't given me the option to vote yet. I did. I said Exactly. Oh, opposed. All opposed. All opposed. <laughs> John is opposed. Three to one. John Hayes. I'm going to put that on the board. Fifteen hundred dollars for maintenance. Is there a motion for the maintenance? For Mr. Trail? I'll move with 
approve the maintenance. Is there a second? <laughs> you can see Dave's not going to make it. <laughs> no, I'm so just like Roger said, though, I mean, earlier, I mean, it's just $1,500 is nothing you know, to, to maintain that. Well, it does what it can. Yeah. That's it. It does what it can. If the Eastern Trail Association or if there's an, also, an organization that's called Friends of the Eastern Trail need more maintenance, then they can do something. But it does something. Uh, I, I think if we don't have any money into it, then it's more inclined that the group will step forward if they want to. That's the first one. So, John, the a motion, motion yeah. to approve yeah. the 1500 and There is no second. Not yet. I'm not going to second. Um, okay, I'll withdraw my motion. Um, I think since that's that's the only park that the town has, and I know that a lot of townspeople who use the trail, and there are more and more that use it all the time, yeah. do consider it a park, that the town should at least make, as Roger said, no, it's not enough, but it's a token effort to at least keep the trail uh, neat, and if a tree comes down across that trail, someone's got to go down. If Roger has to, and his crew have to go down and get rid of that tree, then that money's going to come out of their budget. At least 1500 will give them a minimum to take care of things like that on the trail. Well, and with that said, it being a park, we do have a Parks and Recreation Department. And it, we go through this every year, and I, I really think that this this piece should be in the parks budget. Is this called the right well, parks and Recreation? Well, it's I'm been insisted every year that they remain separate articles. Yes. Yeah. Um, Is there a different amount? It, so what are you want? suggesting that? I mean, what do you think? What did we spend down there this year? What have we spent down there this, this year? This year we spent uh, fifteen hundred. Yeah, we've spent it all. Yeah. But we had a couple of big windstorms too, and some a lot of yeah, stuff and there came was down. A, there was a siltation problem out there. There were yep. a couple of issues that they had to take care of. Mm -hmm. I think so, with the number of people who use that trail, the yep. town is going to be very disappointed. You know, the town meeting, if we refuse to allocate. Nobody was saying we were refusing to allocate the 1500. Yeah, I think that what Dave is saying, what I, my question was, is that yes, we do need more money. Oh, okay, then I wish you would make that a little clearer. Because <laughs> it so, oh, sounded like you didn't want to approve the 1500. I don't, well, my feeling don't is I don't want to approve 1500 because I just think that, you know, that would give, open it up for a group to kind of start up to do the maintenance yep. because. You know, we'll go out there with mowers or we ride yeah. for whatever. When would that be? I don't that, think they that's will. That's what I understood you to say. Yeah, yeah. I did not, yeah. obviously, I yeah. misunderstood Melody because I thought she just didn't want to spend $1,500 <laughs> yeah. making a motion that we increase this amount to, let's say, 5000 <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. 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 I was thinking probably, I, I, well, you. Yeah. Even if you went up 500 to 2000 give them that. that to find out over the course of a year, like this year we've spent 1500 The year before we might not have spent that much because they avid, only do a minimal amount of work down there. As an avid user mm -hmm. of that trail, whether it's walking, running, biking mm -hmm. in the summer, I, I, we could do a lot better. Think now, about I don't, I, we I do. Would say, I, if anything, I would say 2250 would be... Okay, so Melanie's making a motion for 2250. Is there a second on that? I'll second that. Mm. All in favor? Oh, thank you, Todd. You're welcome, Melanie. I'm trying to help you out. You help me, so mm. one hand washes the other. Yeah. <laughs> all those in favor of the 2250? Okay. And Three to all one. those opposed? John Hayes. Good on public works. We didn't do the transfer station. Nope, I'm sorry. 
We are a transfer station. Okay, and this has changed um, on the, if you're looking at the one I gave you last week, it's changed by, it's gone up $25 um, from last year. That's totally unacceptable. Um, so it's eighty thousand nine hundred and fifty dollars. I met with Stu on on Friday. There was a three percent increase in the contract <laughs> fee uh, for Casella Waste. I we hashed it out. He started at a higher number. I said let's go down to a lower number. We settled on three percent. I think three percent is fair. Um, I unfortunately we had a company who wanted to bid on the transfer station and didn't understand how municipal bidding worked. And they gave me their price and opened it up and showed it to me. So it was over twenty thousand more than what we're paying now. I mean, it's like one of the only other people who would actually bid on our transfer station. So, in my opinion, when well, you laughed in his face, I didn't laugh. <laughs> <laughs> I tongue as hard as I could. I said, "Thank you very much. Have a nice day." Um, I think it's fair, um, and I would recommend that we go with. Um, <laughs> Okay. Uh, so my final <laughs> number, yeah, my, my number is seventy-eight thousand nine hundred fifty. Okay, yeah, it's eighty thousand nine fifty. You should have a new packet. Yeah, he's not looking at the new packet. He's pulling what he did last year. Right there, this is your package. That's the one I passed out tonight. That's why I'm making sure that I read the numbers when we go through, so that. Do you know if our well testing down there has showed that that plume is moving? The plume is, the, the contaminants are getting better and it does not appear to be moving. Okay. The, the contaminants are getting better. Yeah, well. <laughs> the, the, the quality. Quality of the water is getting better, the yeah. contaminants are going down. So it seems to be heading in the right direction. Okay. And they're actually, if, if, if MAI can find us some fem, from state money, they're going to recommend that we, um, eliminate three of those testing wells because we don't need them anymore. Oh, and so good. they haven't been testing them and they're trying to find us money through the DEP so that we can get rid of them. Mm -hmm. One of those wells is that the old, trailer, or old dump? Yep. Yeah. All those pipes you see sticking up yeah. out of the ground? Those are test wells that yeah. they put down to. And then we have some going over towards um, where those houses are yeah, over there. The other side of the river. Yeah. So eighty thousand nine fifty. Is there a motion to approve eighty thousand nine fifty? So moved. Is there a second? A second. All those in favor? That's unanimous. Now, General. Right. It is after. Ooh. Nine. All right. What is the pleasure of the board? I would rather keep going and let's see if we can wrap this up. We got two. One more, really, because we're going to come back to recreation unless there's more discussion about that. It would take us about 10 more minutes. <clears throat> General assistance? Yeah. Um, no major changes no there. Major changes. Still 79 by 14. Yes, sir. Entertain a motion for. Uh, question. Yep. FICA has gone down where salaries have gone up. Yes. Once again, it's that rounding error in that Excel spreadsheet. Okay. Did the math to check some of these numbers and I don't know what, what happened there. The spreadsheet I used was created before and I don't know if I changed something that threw something off, but that's what we're looking at. I'll move to approve 79514 for general assistance. General assistance. I'll second that. Mm -hmm. Discussion, questions? Mm -hmm. All in favor? Yes. We have to go back to revenues. Well, reserves and debt. My revenues aren't. I, I don't want to vote on revenues right now. I'd like to have one more meeting's worth of doing those numbers and <coughs> revenue is okay with you. With this far, I think we can hash out revenue and recreation in one more short meeting um, after you come back, so the 19th, if we can do that. Okay. If that works for me. Works for me. Okay. Um, and I'm going to go through because if you're not on your new sheet, then you're going to notice some differences. So we're still at 450 on 
roads, we're at 50,000 on public works, 50,000 on fire department, 5,000 on the rec box, 15,000 on the library. There was some conversation there last time. Um, do you want to individually vote on these or do you want to go through the entirety of it? And, and uh, Because there is an additional request that I need to discuss with you as we go through this. We might as well go through them, I'm going to say individually. Okay. Um, that's, that's fine, it shouldn't take too long. Road projects, that 450000 Yeah. Uh, I, just, I just wanted to pull Roger's proven budget. His request of a grand total was 500000 Oh, 576948. Um, so. Madam Chair? Yes. I'd like to talk about some of these other ones before we do Rose and George Project Reserve. I say that in the last? Yes. So inclined. Um, so I can understand. Uh, police protection? Yep. Okay. I'm not sure if that's the change that you're talking about. Yeah, police protection went from 92 to 84.5. Yep, we borrowed, we paid our last payment on the cruiser. There was a three-year lease purchase on the cruiser, and okay. so um, we're going to. The cruiser only has 40,000 miles on it. We're not ready to replace it yet, so we're not going to outplay that 7,500 to pay for the cruiser this year. Seventy-five hundred. Yep. That was the only change. There is one. Uh, the, well, the library changed. Went up three thousand. They had indicated it was going to go to 13000 this year. That was the initial request. The request now is 15000 And then I'm going to add the Chamber of Commerce has requested $2,000. That I would like the budget board to vote on as well. So if you want, I don't is know if you want. Is the Chamber of Commerce on this one? They are not. They've never been funded by us. No, but is it on this? I don't see it on this. No, it's not. No, they, I got the call from an email from Denise today. After the road conference is looking for 2000 Yes. And that would be your annual dues yep. for a town to belong to the Chamber of Commerce. Yep. And that would put us. And that, that, is that the Arundel Chamber of Commerce? Came on, came on court and Arundel <laughs> Chamber of Commerce. We, we are at. I mean, the name is part of the chamber. The chamber is Kennebunk, Kennebunk Port, and Arundel Chamber of Commerce. Yeah. And there are several businesses in Arundel that, that are part of the chamber. As a matter of fact, the Historical Society is a member of the Chamber of Commerce. And I'm a member of, I'm on, I'm on the executive board of the chamber as well as the board of directors. What is this $2,000 going to go? Where is it going to go? Mm -hmm. It'll go towards promotion of economic development in the town of Arundel. Um, Denise will work with the Economic Development Committee to try to help us along um, in the things that we'd like to see done over the next year. The library, did you happen to find out from the No, I haven't heard back from Jill. So they initially talked about 13 and then they went up to 15? Yes, last year when they did the, when they asked for 12, um, they said that this year they were going to ask for 13. They changed that 13 to 15 because the heating system at the library needed to be replaced and they joined the Minerva network, which is a network of all the libraries in the state of Maine. I guess that you can get books from anywhere. Um, and so that was the reason that they had asked for the 3000 instead of the $1,000 increase. And so we may want to just... I said we would leave that one for the... <laughs> let, 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 let her bring that up at the town meeting. <laughs> we'll that. And make no recommendations on that. Yeah, I don't think we're making a recommendation on the Kennebunk Library, not knowing how many people are actively utilizing the library. Um, and 
table. Let's want to take it up with the recreation. I was going to say, we want to hold the reserves and debt, hold the recreation, and hold the revenues for the last meeting. Because you don't have to make a recommendation on that. You I, can let, yeah. let that go without a recommendation. Well, I, as far as the library goes, I, I, I would personally, my personal feeling on that is zero recommendation. <laughs> That, not to, not, <laughs> not zero not dollars, zero, no recommendation. No recommendation at all. I, I, I think that um, it's, it's up to the people. It's up to the people, and it's, it, I, we really need to start outweighing the costs. You know, I, I had a library card, and after what happened, Couple of years ago, I have not been back to that library, nor do I ever think I will ever be back to that library. I don't have a library card. Let me. Uh, I have an let iPad. Me get the number of users from Jill. Um, That's all my personal thought. I, other people have a different view, and I certainly respect their view. Well, personally, I've never set foot in the place, and I probably never will. But I think, as the budget board, we should make a recommendation one way or the other. And I think in order to do that, we need the numbers on yeah. how many people from town are using it and get a bit of a feel yeah. for how much interest there is in it. Yeah. Well, Before we shoot them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just, the, the Eastern Trail, I, this is going to age me on the budget board, but um, when the Eastern Trail started, we, we pretty much left that one up to the voters as well. Oh, you, you can. I'm just yeah. saying, I think we're sort of dodging the responsibility. <coughs> you just say, if we were elected or appointed to, I think, to make a recommendation on this budget, and I think we're sort of dodging that responsibility if we say, oh, we're going to just kick it back to the voters. I mean, well, ultimately, even, it comes to the voters anyway. Yeah. But even the selectmen do that with some articles. There might yeah, be an article that, that and this happens to be one of them, that if I had my way, that thing's on. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's what they get. Um, well, Velma, because one of the reasons, one of the reasons have, I really admired you back during the RSU thing was when most of the selectmen were dodging the issue, you mm -hmm. had the nerve to come out and say that you supported uh, Rumble staying in the RSU. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I think if you're a selectman or a board member, um, we're here to. Make you know, a decision. Make recommendations yeah. and represent the people. We have, and I've I've said this all along with whether it's the Kennebunk Library or what library, we have people in town who have library cards with MacArthur and Biddeford. We have people who go to the library in Lyman. We have a lot of people who use the library in Kennebunk Port, and we pay those li libraries nothing. Would it be worthwhile to? So that number of how many people actually use the library. Yeah, now, now a lot of those, some people may use the library, and because their library card is free, they might only go to the library once or twice. Some people may go there quite often, but uh, we won't know. All we will know is how many Arundel people have, have library cards. Would, would it be beneficial I mean, to really... A lot of people don't show up at town meetings, but a lot of people show up at the polls. Um, could, we, could we do a straw poll and just ask a question as to if whether or not they've attended a library, uh, what library they have attended, um, and things to that nature? Yeah, you can do it, but if it would all, it won't be effective for this year, it'll help us for next year. But yeah, yeah that would be definitely well, we it, that. We go to the polls the day before. The day we before we tabulate that yeah. and uh, get that to town meeting. You have a very vocal <laughs> Unless John group has <laughs> in favor of the Kenny Bunk Library, no oh, matter really what's the that. amount. Yeah. If if it is decided that it is going. We're going to recommend zero. Then I am sure that that group uh, is all going to be at town meeting, as they were last year, mm -hmm. 
to make sure it got passed. Well, but and you know what? And that's a wonderful thing because then they can help us with the rest of the budget. Well, yeah. both, <laughs> but the thing is that both boards recommend zero, and you can't. They do can't. You can't go up at town meeting, you can only go down. You know what I mean? So the budget board recommended no dollars and the board of selectmen recommended no dollars, there wouldn't even be a question of the I would, warrant. would love to concur with the board of selectmen mm -hmm. on this issue. Yep. I, you know, it, maybe the budget board could attend a meeting with the board of selectmen yep. and so that we can really make, hash this out and make a good decision for our town. Yep. Going under what you're recommending yeah. Does the board select and already have a recommendation this in regards one? to this bill? No. <laughs> the I don't same think conversation so. kind of happened. Yeah. But I'm going <coughs> to, the agenda is looking like it's going to be pretty big on this coming Monday, but I'm hoping to get some conversation on there about the budget as well so that we can try to get through I this. I will be here Monday. Right, exactly. Um, and the 24th, there will definitely be a conversation about this. Yeah. So on the 24th of March. March. So can, can the budget board show up to the Board of Selectmen's meeting on March 24th? If they're so inclined. I'm sure Todd will be happy to let you know. Yep. I'll send you a yeah. copy of our I'll agenda. Send a copy of the agenda and we'll have the discussion on the agenda. Yeah, and with that, with, with, if, how would we, We have a joint meeting so that the budget board can also vote on this issue as well. You, I can I can put language on the um, agenda on the agenda that says that the budget board will be in attendance to make decisions on certain items. And I will not be able to attend because my daughter's got registration for classes in my high school. Just want to get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> so the next meeting is going to be March 19th, 7 p.m. here at the library, unless it's not available. Could the Board of Selectmen show up at the 19th meeting? I think the 19th, I, uh, that's a Wednesday. Oh, crap. The, that's way, the 19th is business after hours at Business at after Weir's. hours at Weir's. So I will be at Weir's. Yeah, um, I will say I'm, I'm going to check the I'm going to have to check the school calendar and see what date we can do. But the 19th will not work because I've already told them that I'm going to be at that business after hours. Yeah. I'd like to suggest that we table this matter until our next yeah. meeting, and by then we will know what the board yeah, selects on the top of it. Yep. We need to decide what. And I would like to make that a motion. Yep, absolutely. Motion to table. <coughs> Is there a second? I will suck that. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> I'm almost in favor. You unanimous. All right. Thank you very much. I'm, I'm, I'm very impressed. The progress we've made. Um, the next meeting is going to be when? Uh,